And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're talking about um, this game. It's, it's Sumatra, but I could, you could be certainly understand if you cannot read that cover. Really, really bad choice of font on this game. From Reiner Knizia, this is a game about collecting tiles for various amounts of points because, of course, it is. It's from Reiner Knizia. Um, but in this game, you are traveling and documenting your journey about the things you saw. That's kind of a cool theme. Let's see if the game is cool. Their own travel notebook and they're gonna be placing tiles in that notebook there are round tiles and there are square tiles there's no real difference between them it's just that these round ones are ones that start out on the table at the beginning and as you place them you'll place them in different sections so these are people that you've run across in here here you have animals that you might have gotten there are volcanoes there is fauna and each one is going to score differently so at the end of the game whoever has the most inhabitants gets a bonus of five points and whoever is the least loses five points and if you get extra people here if you get five you can just start stacking them here and they're going to give you bonus points at the end of the game here you just get the craft tiles as you're collecting various crafts you're going to get points for how many you have so none if you only have one but if you have five you'll get 20 points here you can only ever have one more. You need to collect these kind of in pairs. And when you do that, you'll pick the higher value. So this fauna is worth three. The orangutan is four. So this group here would be worth four points. And then get the, here, these don't give you any points as you use your GPS type nonsense. But when you finish these, you're going to be able to get an extra tile from the known information area. Uh, down here, you're going to have village. And you're going to get five. If you have more pairs of these, then you have village tiles. So the more of these you get, the more village tiles you can score. And then down here, you have volcanoes. Now, volcanoes aren't going to be worth points unless you get three equipment tiles of the same color. So if I get three equipment tiles and a volcano was worth five, otherwise it's worth minus five. But also if I get three equipment tiles of the same color, I get a bonus of five points anyway. But even more importantly, if there are no equipment tiles in a column, I don't score for anything in that column. So each equipment tile can only be used in one column each color. So there are various colors in the game. So I'm gonna try to fill them all up so I can score everything. So that's a little bit about how scoring works. Also, there are some tokens here that as soon as you accomplish them, you can get them. So when I have three animals, I can take this one, which is worth three. If I have a whole nine different tiles from all nine things, I can take this, which is worth some points. So those are other ways to score too. So there's a board here in which you have this notebook here, and this is the travel notebook. And on a player's turn, if your pawn is in the same spot as the travel notebook, you can take any tile from what is called the available information area. So you can take one of these and put it on your board. Or you can move your pawn. Now there's some rules about moving your pawn. You can't do it when there's round tokens here, but once the round tokens are gone, that's at the beginning of the game, you can move it to the next section. That's all you do. And then on your next turn, you'll move the notebook there. And when you move the notebook there, you're going to draw tiles from the bag here that match this number. And so I would draw five tokens from the bag and put them in the available information. So now, uh, and then I can take one of those tokens. Then everyone else is going to have to waste turns moving up here to, before they can grab the tiles. So if you're the first person to move to a section, you'll have the chance to grab them. But if you move, you're also deciding not to take something. Then all the tokens will move up to this known area here as time goes by. And you can only get these tokens by making pairs of GPS and tracking tiles on the board. Once the notebook gets here, you can see there's eight tiles. Once those tiles are gone, that's going to be the end of the game, and you'll score like I mentioned already. That's not necessarily the easiest way. This is almost the kind of game that you have to see in place for it to work, but that's how the game's played. I have a lot of issues with this game. 
I have a lot of issues with the production. This notebook itself is fine. I mean, it's thin cardboard. I don't like that the starting tiles are round and square. These look like two different tiles. They're literally the same thing. And I know they did that so that it's easy to set them up, but I would have just made the colors different in the back. As it is, the punch board, these don't punch out that well, and the backs of these look blah. Um, the artwork's fine, but the font, I already complained about the font on the title, but they use that font on everything, including the board here. This is an eight, but it looks like an X. And constantly we were having to peer at the board to see what the different things were. The rules also are not the easiest thing to understand. They have one sheet here that shows you everything's scored. Why is that information not literally just printed on your travel journal? Like, why doesn't it just tell you how they work? Because these are not necessarily intuitive, especially the, you know, the flora and the fauna and the volcanoes and stuff. I, I just had a problem with the production of this game. It, it looks okay at best, but functionally I found it to be a pain in the neck. So what is it about this game that's going to draw you in? The idea of moving, you know, staying there and taking a tile or deciding to forge ahead and hope that the new tiles that come out of the bag are worth grabbing, that's that's a little interesting. Unfortunately, it's the only interesting part of the game. The taking the tiles, man, I just wanted to fall asleep. Oh, wow, pairs of animals and, and, and flora and fauna give you the lower points and three equipment tiles of the same color. And it's like all these different ways to score, but none of them are really that interesting. You have to do the, the equipment at the bottom or else your stuff at the top doesn't score. You might want to go for people, but whatever you might decide to go for, someone else might take the tiles you need. It, it, it's easy to mess other people over and be like, eh, I'll take this tile. And you're like, well, there's only so many tiles in the game, and you just took one of the ones I wanted. Oh, I, the, the, the components for the game, not very happy with. I don't like having to like, struggle. The rule book was not very easy to understand. But the, the font choices and always peering at a tile to see what kind of tile it is, it's, ah, there's just nothing interesting about it. It's a game that uh, it's been weeks since I played it, since doing this review, and I had to go in there and say, what was this game even about? I remembered I didn't like it, but I couldn't remember much more about it because it's forgettable. And it's just the same old collect stuff for various amounts of points. That's not a bad thing. I have a lot of games I like where you collect stuff for various amounts of points. There's a lot of games that do that. I probably reviewed one or two of them this week. But this one feels like it's just halfway done. It feels like they just threw some mechanisms in a box and are like, you'll like it. And I might even forgive that, but then when I can't read the font and the rules aren't very intuitive, that whole moving with the book thing, I just wanted to boot that out of the room. Just let's put the tiles out, let's draft them. But even the way you score points, it's just not very interesting. Oh, I get points for having the most people, or but I don't do that unless I also get the camps at the bottom, the volcano, I need three of the same color. So if I take a volcano early in the game, that could be worth minus five. So why should I take it? Because I might get plus five. There's a lot of luck. Uh, and I've talked about this game more than I feel like I should at this point. This is, it's a nice cover, but that's about the best thing I can say. Dice Tower Judgment, a forgettable game with bad components. Thank <laughs> you.